Round number six, jealousy is in the air and it smells like a stinking perfume and it's coming just from my body because I have never been more jealous of a duty than, and I shouldn't say duty because if you listen to me mostly talk, it's mostly going to be a poop joke next. Not a poop joke. This duty that some of the Australian soldiers have is unbelievable because even though there is a huge tragedy going on in australia right now with their fires and so many animals i think we we reported that there was a billion animals that were killed something so like that an obscene but they're, number obscene yeah so but right now there's some australian soldiers who their duty right now is to nurse some of these injured koala bears back into health and there's a picture of them all sitting in a row with these little koala bears covered in chlamydia with a little blanket surrounding them and a syringe of their little koala milk i assume that's koala milk might be eucalyptus milk mm. that they're just pouring into their little gullets and nursing them back to health i can't think of a single creature on planet earth that i would want to nurse back to health more than an injured koala bear can you they seem so cuddly I just want to, sometimes my body aches to hold, well, actually to have a koala hold me mm. all the way around. But looking at these pictures, yeah. And these, it's kind of a morale boost for them, I was reading. These are Australian Army soldiers from the South Australian and Tasmanian 16th Regiment. And they have been out among the fires and they've been seeing all the destruction and seeing all these dead animals. And so it's kind of a break for them. They get to go into this room. They get to sit in these chairs. They get koalas wrapped in swaddling little blankets and mm. they get to feed them and cuddle them. And I, I bet it's just as helpful for them as it is for the koalas. Yeah, very therapeutic, I'd imagine. And they all have like smiles on their faces looking mm -hmm. down at the koalas. I just, ugh. I, How could you not? I How could you not have a big old smile on your face? It's so nice. This, I mean, it's so terrible, and, but it's so nice that yeah. they get to do it. <laughs> Fuck. It's quite apropos. Actually, I had a dream last night. This is no BS. It's crazy that this story came out. I had a dream that I was in my old house growing up, and there were two bears, a mama bear and a cub, on our deck. And then they came in the house, but they talked, and they were just looking for food. So that really only interests me. Were they looking for porridge? Yeah, yeah. they were looking for some <laughs> porridge. No, I think uh, one of them took one of the cell phones and they took a, a bag of chips. But anyway, yes, this is very... <laughs> Classic bear move. <laughs> this is a very great story. Yeah. Great working party. But brings to mind, what were some other great working parties that our listeners have experienced while in the military? A good one. So we took to we took to our social media accounts, Zero Blog Thirty on social media, on both Twitter and Instagram, and even on TikTok. If you want to go follow us there, if you're one of those brave people who are still not scared to have the Chinese influence TikTok, we've got a count there. We asked them what their favorite duty or their favorite working party or like temporary duty that they had to do, and some of the answers didn't disappoint. Kate, what were some of your favorites? Well, these answers were kind of like I think we talked about this before in Shawshank Redemption, where they get to at the end end of the day after doing the roof the guards let them crack a couple beers on the roof right. and have a moment of freedom that's what these working right. parties were kind of like um at shoe 1323 said museum and boot camp crushed some ice cream snagged some pepsis and hit up the vending machine at that exact moment i could have stayed there forever and been perfectly content good old paris island and i think he's referring to what? one of those final weeks where you get sent out specifically team week is what it's yeah, called for a whole week you get sent somewhere i mine was to the firehouse on base and the firefighters there they were marines but they're like we don't give a fuck what you do and so we just kind of like dicked around and joked around and got to hang out and then if the di's would come by and check through they'd be like they're coming like the firefighters would like warn us and we'd start to pretend to clean stuff mm -hmm. again and we're on it but it was like such a treat yeah so that's a good one i got laundry detail and whenever you're sitting whenever you're sitting there at, at boot camp did you have one specific thing that you craved the entire time that you're in boot camp and couldn't wait to get it whenever you got out hmm. good question brownies ice cream mine was mine was a butterfinger bar and a coke oh, i wanted oh, a yeah. butterfinger and a coke so damn bad yeah i wanted anything chocolate just right into the injector right into my veins uh Kristen Beck said, getting rid of excess RPGs, and she's been on the show before. It was cool until I shot 27 of them. Then I blacked out for a second. I mean, just getting to shoot. There was times in the field where they're like, shit, we have to go back in two hours, but we have thousands and thousands of extra rounds. 
and they would let us just put it on three round bursts and just rah, 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 rah. they would let us just go to town and they mm-hmm. didn't give a fuck if we aimed at anything and those were the yep. times that you were just like your taxpayer money at work man just wasting think about how rounds. much money that is oh, too yeah, like yeah, five, five, RPGs six, are seven, not six, two rounds. Expensive. why would you not take them back to wherever you were going such a huge pain in the dick and if because then you got to get an ammo driver yeah. you got to check it in you got to do a full rounds count to get exactly how many you have it's a pain in the ass so you don't have to do that when it's just bragging. so is that like the episode of the office where they're explaining to michael how um like what he, they're doing the lemonade stand analogy where they're like if they give you ten dollars and but it only costs you nine dollars to make a lemonade stand they're going to give you nine dollars next time so you spend the whole ten dollars you shoot all the rpgs so that they yeah, yeah so you can get the same amount of ammo the, the next, next time right. okay. yep. yep so that i mean i imagine it's was cool with regular ammo with with uh rpgs i imagine it's super cool uh, let's see. At- I saw one that just didn't seem believable for, uh, on. on Instagram. Uh, John underscore Ank. A PMO used to get people drunk and give them sobriety tests to test the new Marines. Always wanted to be on that. So they would purposely get people drunk. I don't know. That seems outside. Big time true. Really? Big time true. Huh. Yep. We used to do it in Okinawa all the time. <laughs> And there was uh, two years before I got to Okinawa, they actually did a controlled burn, too, to demonstrate what to the NCIS, like what you would do whenever you were high. Yeah. Well, it's OK. All right. We need to dive into this a little deeper. How do you get someone drunk in a controlled environment? How do you know that you're not giving them too much to where maybe they end up with alcohol poisoning to where they're just drunk enough that you can test equipment? I mean, because you have like all of the breathalyzers and shit there and they don't, it's not like they're like, okay, go crush 18 beers and come back. They do it basically to (laughs) the point of intoxication. So they'll be like, okay, this is your, how you act under one beer. This is how you act under two, three. And once you get to the point where you would fail, they pull you back off and be like, okay, now you're done. It's not like people are getting blitzed house hands. Oh, all right. All right. Well, still, still kind of fun. There was another yeah. one that didn't seem like it was all that fun, though. The, at Tacos Y3S, build water balloons for an entire duty day and prep for a combat dining in. Filling water balloons, just a step below filling sandbags. Not fun. Still, though, I think compared to what you normally have to do, you're like, well, this I is suppose, different fun. I suppose, yeah, yeah. I like at Scatty Light said, had to load all the baggage on a plane to Kyrgyzstan. Everybody loaded in the back in the back to front, so I was in first class for the ten hour flight. So initially it seemed like a shitty one. Fuck, I have to load all the bags. And then in the end it turned out they got to ride first class mm-hmm. on a ten hour flight, which is a goddamn delight. Mm-hmm. A lot of good answers here though. Um, first time I ever flew first class was on the way home from Iraq. That's not too shabby. Yeah, it was great. It was one of those seats that actually fully reclined too. It was lovely it's the way to go at dc burger has a good one pro bowl in hawaii we had to guard the cheerleaders when they had the block party (laughs) yeah so i'm sure they were devastated that they had to do that um at frenchy man three i got to work an lgpa tournament refilling the coolers at each hole that's pretty fucking sweet Um, yeah definitely just to be out at a golf tournament for sure yeah every now and then these things work out uh, work out pretty damn well at john harm mowed lawn at a parking lot where a bunch of drill sergeants parked and sprayed grass all over multiple clean dodge chargers (laughs) i love that just parking and just shooting grass trimmings all over fancy cars Mm -hmm. well military fancy cars but yeah a lot of great answers there did you guys have any other favorites i like this one from Purvis.Kyle on Instagram, mowing the grass in basic, got me out of the barracks and gave me an hour to myself with the smell of fresh cut grass. Yeah. That's just like yep. one of those smells I had that, that one. I got home. that duty and you end up looking like the biggest nerd in the history of the world whenever you're doing that. They make you wear the PPE boots? PPE is out of yes. control. <laughs> I had to do it too. They make you wear these And the goggles that boots. they give you, co- they cover like... Almost all the way to your ears. It basically looks like a clear ski mask. You have to wear your boonie cover. You are covered. And then you had, uh, I had to wear two glow belts at the same exact time. Two. Yep. Double glow Unbelievably belt. nerdy. Wow. Indeed. The, the, the famed double glow belt. 